everybody, welcome to a very cold United Kingdom. We've got today a De Vilvis Neptune, which is a Japanese De Vilvis made in Japan. It's a top cup gun, so we'll go through that in a video. We're going to look at some footage of it spraying in a second. But I just wanted to do an intro to give you an idea of size. That's a SAR to 1500, and you can see it's actually quite a bit big, well, a fair bit bigger. Well, hopefully you can see it's bigger than the SAR to 1500. That's an a and I skull, which is a similar size to a SATA X5500, and you can see that's actually a bit bigger. So it's between the size of the a and I, which is a big gun, and the little um, SATA. So it's about the same size as a, a Tecna GTI Pro Lite, etc. It's a top cut gun, and it actually takes the same cups as the De Vilbis as well. But what I also wanted to show you is it, it can come as far as I know you can get them separately it can come with this 400 milliliter aluminium cup now it's, I know a lot of people don't use cups anymore uh, I still do because I find it I find it cheaper um, but it comes with this aluminium cup and the beauty of this little aluminium cup is that you can use this obviously on the GTI Pro Lite uh, or Techno Pro Lite because it's the same thread it's also the same thread as the ANI skull uh, or should be anyway yeah so it's a good 400 mil cup because 600 sometimes is a bit too much uh, and the small cup I've got is often uh, too small anyway we're gonna have a look see how it sprays and um, see what else we think of the gun so this being a full-size gun one of the things you notice about it is it's relatively light and that's because it's made with magnesium which is the same thing as the Luna 2 but it doesn't have the the same effect on you when you when you grab hold of the Luna 2 you grab hold of something you think boy this is really light this doesn't this doesn't do that it's not light enough to do that uh, I did actually the, the De Vilbis Japan say it's supposed to be 379 grams and I put it on my scales and it was actually 378 grams and it's the first gun I've weighed that is less than the manufacturer's given figures because normally they're about four or five percent out they, they obviously have this some kind of super scales that none of us none of nobody else has uh, that makes their uh, their guns lighter but anyway it comes in at, um, at the proper uh, weight it's supposed to so give you an idea um, it's about that's about 13.3 ounces the finer core which is the Meiji um, full size but it's physically quite a small gun that comes in at 342 so that's even lighter and that's an aluminium body um, and the SATA 5500 which is very similar size wise to the gun you saw at the start the ANI skull that's 537 grams that's actually on the scales which for you guys in Imperial is 18.9 ounces. So quite a bit of difference, about what, 20%, 25% more? So you, you do notice that this is a relatively light gun for a full-size gun. Now, obviously, what's it actually like? Uh, well, I used it for, in this particular video, I used it for base coat and I used it for clear coat. And I must say, first of all the thing you, you'll notice the most or I notice the most is you pick it up and although it's not particularly heavy it feels amazingly well made the only other guns when you pick them up that, that in my opinion feel the same is the um, the Meiji guns which most of those feel really particularly the newer ones so the finer core and the finer force feel much really well made much much better in the hand this feels the same it just feels really really well made uh what's the other gun sata the, uh, not sata the segola the sata's okay but it, it's not quite there in my opinion uh the segola the 4600 uh, mini extreme as well all feel and the uh, 3300 as well all feel really really well made and that's exactly what this gun does it feels really well made it's also got uh, again, I'll, I'll say about the Luna 2, I'll put a link in the description, but there's a kind of coating on these things, which is, it, it, it's almost like a plastic cover on top of the magnesium. And I don't know whether it's there to um, give the magnesium more protection because it's more prone 
to corrosion than uh, aluminium. I'm not sure, but it, it, it's on there and it, it's like a non-stick lining. So when you're actually cleaning the gun, you put some thinners over it with a brush just to wipe it off around the outside. And it all bubbles. It all bubbles as if there's um, some kind of reaction to it. Uh, not not the, 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 the what I mean is the actual thinners bubble, not the uh, not the material that's on the uh, gun. So it's like an anti-stick coating, which is actually really good for uh, cleaning it, etc. So I'm sure, rather than rub it on about what it's like, you're going to want to know what it performs like, which is part of the video because obviously you can see what it's performing like as I uh, as I use it. But it actually performs really, really well. As far as I know, you can only get this with the 110B cap. Uh, I did look on the um, Deville Bush Japan website, which is in English and Japanese, as you probably would expect. And I can only see it in, in the 1.3, 1.2 and 1.4 with the 110B cap. So this is the 110B cap in a 1.3 I thought you know I'll get middle of the road see what it's like I bought this from painting tools Japan I do mention them because people often ask with some of these guns that particularly in Europe and the Americas are a little bit um, obscure they wonder where you get them from I got them from painting tools Japan um, at the time I got it it was about 290 295 GB pounds but I bought this about eight months ago uh, and since then, as far as I know, De De Vilbus Japan have had three price increases. I think about five, six percent each. I had a quick look on on eBay at their their uh, site before I did before I'm just narrating this video, and it, it, they were about three hundred and thirty GB pounds. But it depends where you are as to what the exchange rate is, etc. And that's with the cup. That's with the aluminium cup. And if you if you use cups, as I said at the start, if you use cups. And you've got a, like a Technopro light, etc. Get the cup as well because it, it's really, really handy. Really light cup uh, and 400 milliliters for the sort of stuff I do is really right, sort of in the right ballpark. Three, 400 milliliters is, um, you know, what, what I'm after most of the time. So it's a, it's a really good uh, cup and it, it, it doesn't cost you much if you actually buy it at the same time as the gun. But I found for base coat. All I needed to use it at was about 1.4 bar, which is about, what's that, 21 PSI, something like that. And for clear coat, I bumped it up to 1.5 bar, which is what is recommended. It's recommended to be used at 1.5 bar, um, which is about 23 PSI, something like that. So it's quite a low pressure gun. And you'll see on the video, you'll see that there's not loads and loads of overspray. So it's good if you don't want loads of overspray. I mean, they call it a, a low volume, low pressure, uh, sorry, low volume, medium pressure gun or LVMP. And I'm not too sure with, with these manufacturers. A lot of them have, you know, low LV, LP, uh, LVMP uh, and obviously we're all familiar with HVLP etc but sometimes I think they, they stretch the uh, the truth with some of these things because there's plenty of guns that aren't called that that are you know work at similar pressure and, and perform just as well but certainly if you're after a gun that uh, doesn't use loads of air they quote 195 litres I'm not sure what that is in CFM but it's about 195 litres a minute of air so it's not loads um, I think you'll find it's just a bit more than like a Kiwami 4 which is about 100 from memory about 170 uh, litres a minute of air so it's not particularly air hungry um, ideal ideal for someone that wants a good gun at home that's not run of the mill because you don't actually see loads of these um, these guns about one of, one of the things that I think might be a bit of an accolade is that you get Chinese copies of it and normally if something's got Chinese copies of it there's even you know it's either sold quite a lot or it's actually got a quite a good reputation and I'm sure this has sold quite a lot uh, in Asia which is its main market uh, but I, I think it, it probably gets the you know the the copied copied in China bug uh, the fact that it is actually very very good um, yeah I mean I was I was really impressed with it I, I wouldn't sort of say oh it was absolutely brilliant blew me socks off because it didn't really it was just 
very very good at what it does i would certainly um buy, buy one if i was in the market for a good quality full-size gun uh, with low overspray, uh, not a particularly high air consumption, and I wanted something really well made and something a bit different, then um, you know I would use that. You, you'll see in the video, uh, we've actually gone past it, but when I was doing the base coat, it was fluttering slightly, so I adjusted the pressure a couple of different times to see whether that was it, because sometimes if you put too much pressure for a cap or too little pressure, it will, it will fluctuate but it wasn't that it was just that the the tip needed tightening now it was already tight in my opinion it was tight so i just tightened it up a bit more and it seemed to cure that uh, but that's that seems to the more i've used the gun that seems to have gone now i can just do it up reasonably tight i never try and do them up too tight because i don't think they need it most of the time i just do it up to my normal normal tension um, and that seems to be fine now so i think it was just something maybe where the gun was relatively new as you use it you know the threads stretch slightly uh things compress slightly and it, it's actually well at home now i'd rather have that than the other way around in it's fine when you first get it and then it starts to um give you problems as you use it so yeah as i say thoroughly enjoyed using it really really good gun uh and definitely definitely a bit different uh which i really really like but the when you're using the controls it's just a, a feeling of of quality and it's not the same it's not the same sort of uh engineering quality you get with uh meiji uh it's more the engineering quality you get with segola and that's the fact that it's um really well made and you know you could drive a bus over and it'd probably come out the other side okay with the, with the meiji it's like a, a precision uh, <coughs> sorry it's like a precision swiss watch um and you get the feeling with those that if you did run a bus over it uh it, it just wouldn't quite work right uh, and that's no no disrespect to meiji because i think they're absolutely brilliant guns really really well made the best build quality there is but they're they're that finely made that uh you you, you wouldn't want to like drop it too often etc whereas this you you could probably drop pick up and it'd work absolutely you know everything would work absolutely fine but anyway here's the final results it's a u-pole clear temperature was with me on this i've got uh looking at my notes where was it oh i haven't got the, i haven't got the temperature here yes i have 19 degrees celsius um which means that i didn't have to use any any heat or anything and spraying's really easy when you get to like the the, the summertime this is actually uh autumn but when you get to uh, you know when it's above 18 19 degrees in the workshop it's actually a real pleasure to spray because uh, it just makes it so much easier than uh, what i normally have to do in the cold As, sorry about missing the first i missed the first uh, coat but that is the spray out pattern of the um, of this gun with base coat you saw on the left just then and as you can see if you want a super flat finish this thing uh, provides it i try and get as close as i can so that you can get an idea of the amount of orange peel because i know people like that um, you will get orange peel with all these guns uh, it's just that some give you more than others but the clear coat's got something to do with it as well uh, and obviously most of it's going to be down to the uh, the painter at the end of the day but this was uh, you know just needed to be as flat as you could possibly get uh, and that's what we did this is two days afterwards so there's been a little bit of a drop off in the gloss level with the u-pole uh, it's just with with fast clear which normally holds on quite well but you can see it is quite glossy anyway guys thanks for watching the video as always thanks for watching cheers bye bye